ambulance service. There's a patient breathing. She's in labour. Every minute of every day, the ambulance service answers our cries for help. From the crews on the ground saving lives. One, two, three. Just keep going. To the staff in control, making the split-second decisions on who should get help. I've got another cat one. I hope to God that's not real. Not the only people God, this is crass. The North East Ambulance Service delivers emergency care for the 2.7 million people of Newcastle and beyond. We're coming as fast as we can. We've got multiple crews travelling. Oh, we've got you. We've got you. We're going to look after you. This is the story of how both the region and the service that cares for them are struggling to bounce back through the most testing times. We are one big ambulance service. One big family. Saving lives, breaking hearts, helping little old ladies across the road. Thank you very much. It's arms. Welcome to the North East. Service. Is the patient breathing? Yes, she is, yeah. I think she's in labour. Can you see the baby coming at all? Uh, she's got trousers on. Right, well, she's going to need to take her trousers off if she's in labour. Take her trousers off. I've got no cats in there. Keep going, all right, we are on the way, OK? We're coming on our highest response. Help, 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 help. Jen is one of 30 call handlers on duty and control tonight. She's responsible for answering emergency calls from the 2.7 million people of the North East. <coughs> Try and get her to slow her breathing down in through her nose and out through her mouth. Keep breathing through your nose and out through your mouth. Yeah, keep encouraging her to do that. You're doing brilliant, Georgia, come on. You're doing really well. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> she's coming, she's coming. Right, can you see her head? Yeah, you coming out. Yeah. Just tell her to bear right down, grit her teeth together. All the swear words need to come out. Yeah. Everybody she hates, just go for it. That's it. The cord around the baby's neck? Yes. The cord's around the neck? Yes. Right, I need you to gently unwrap it from around her neck. Do not pull or damage that cord, though. Just keep tapping her feet for me. Yeah. Is that the baby yeah. crying? Yeah. yeah. Oh, just keep tapping the bottom of our feet, obviously not too hard. Yeah. The, the crew are in the house, are they? Yes, yeah. thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long one, wasn't it? I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I'm buzzing for you, mate. Update from the crew, everything is OK. Ah, uh, There you go, mate. Congratulations. I feel like you've had a baby. I feel like I need to buy you a present. <laughs> I should have said, Jennifer's a mint name. Yeah. Oh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> How do you think tonight's going to pan out, Holly? Do you think we're in for a busy night or not? I think so. I would Both. say, Holly, you're quite the pessimist. <laughs> Joining Jen are dispatchers Holly and Sam, who will be looking after crews attending emergencies from the top of Northumberland all the way down to Teesside. Booking on tonight's shift in Hartlepool is 329, James and Ollie. Hartlepool says 329, good evening. Um, how are both doing over? Good evening, Holly. We're both all right. Just discussing how much coffee we can have in one shift. Dr. 331, good evening. It's just... Get your man in, please. Yeah, you've got myself, Rebecca CCA, and you've got Hannah Paramedic. Hopefully, tonight brings a few good jobs. Hopefully, meet some nice people. Also signing on for the next 12 hours is Red Car 332, crewmates Jess and Christian. What have you got food-wise there tonight? Let's have a look. 
Um, it's International Pie Week, so pies. And what then else? I've got my triple mac and cheese. <laughs> and then bread rolls to make a triple mac and cheese Tabasco sandwich. Which will be sensational. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. Alyssa Blue. Just have a look at her chest for me, see if she's breathing. Baby. Is she breathing? The chest's not moving. I've got the emergency ambulance response arranged for travelling as our highest priority, OK? What's your address? I need your address, please. Do you need any assistance from the ambulance service today? The ambulance service? Yeah, that's who she's rang. She's rang 999. Why is rang the ambulance service? Ooh, she just fell down the stairs. How many stairs did she fall down? All of them, I think. Ma'am, don't move, sweetheart. Please don't move. How old is she? She's 78 today. What's her breathing like? She's, she's, she's just grown. Like, she, she's breathing quite funny. I've got a C2 fees in Stockton. This is for a 78 year old female. She's falling down the stairs. She's stuck on the floor by the looks of me. Querying a stroke. It was called in by a daughter. 999 mode activated. The nearest available crew to the Category 2 call in progress is Stockton 331, Hannah and Becky. They are four minutes away. Because more than a few words would be impossible. Does she seem to be sort of, yeah, struggling Pant. desperately for every breath? It's like she's panting. What's her name? Sheila. Sheila. The last few weeks she's been going dizzy, and when she's walking, she's stumbling to walk. And she was going up and the stairs, and she just fell, like, backwards. She was choking and being sick, so I had to get her on the side. Oh, done the right thing, yeah. Because it was all she coming out the nose and the mouth. Did she look like she was having a seizure? She did that, that's what I thought. And how long did that last for? It was about two minutes, if that. Sheila! Sheila! Because I didn't want to it's all right. No, you've done the right thing, and we're here now. It's horrible. Well, it's your own, Mum. It's It's awful, isn't it? It is. Try not to worry, though. Sheila? Right. Should we get this scoop? I think what we'll do is we'll get our scoop in, um, and we'll slide her onto that yeah. on the back, and we'll get her on our stretcher. We'll get her on the back and do some more checks and see where to go from there, yeah. all right? What was your name, sorry? Melanie. 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 All right. Are you all right as well? Yeah. yeah I know. I'll just have a cry, I know. Get it all out, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Sheila, can you give my hand a squeeze? Can you squeeze my hand? I'm concerned that she's, like, hit her head and this is why she's presenting the way she is. Sheila, you just relax back for us. Sheila, oh, that's it. Yeah, there we are. You just stay there. No, stay there. We're going to lift you up and get you on our stretcher, OK? You just stay nice one, and still. Two, three. That's it, Sheila. Stay nice and still. Just stay still, Mum. The crew will take Sheila to the trauma centre at James Cook Hospital, eight miles away. Ma'am, I'm here, right? Just lay down. And know Martin's here as well, yeah, he's right? Yeah, he's just go for but a we have to get checked out. We have to take you to see somebody now and see if you're all right. Oh, Would she I'll normally be responding to us and talking to us? Yeah, she'd tell you to pee off. <laughs> she should, she'd shout at us. Oh, is that what you're thinking? Just... Sheila, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So the doctors are aware that you're in here. Yeah. So they're just going to do all the checks, try and get her settled and things, and they will just keep popping in to keep you updated. She's 78 today, and I'm the only one who didn't get her a card. Oh! <laughs> so I've just been there all the time, nothing had chance. Oh, bless you. Oh, 
well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, she's, she's in the best hands, all right. Yeah, she is. No, no, no problem. No, it's all right, it's not a problem. Take care, Take care all right. yourself, so it was nice to meet you under the circumstances, all right. Take care, bye. bye. Three three one. Stockton three three one. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I've got you clear. So, is there something for an update uh, from hospital, please? Yeah, Sheila's had a fall um, from quite a height down the stairs. Um, it sounds like she's had a seizure when she's got to the bottom. It was actually Sheila's birthday today, so unfortunately she hasn't had a really nice birthday. Um, but yeah, hopefully they'll get to the bottom of what it is and she starts to get better. It was our patient's birthday today, bless her. Not what you wanted on her birthday, right? No, like. I've seen you know. Ambulance services, the patient breathing. No. How old is the patient? She's four. She's four, we never know. The effects of a busy Wednesday night are being felt in control. There have already been 218 999 calls in just the first three hours of the shift. I was just a boy with what injuries does he have? Um, his left arm. He's given like a lot. What's happened? He's fucking stabbed himself in the arm with a knife. My daughter, she's feeling a bit emotional. He's tough some paracetamol. He's only 12. Thank you. I've got the next job detail for you. It's from a 12 year old girl. She's taking an overdose, but it's her dose of self harm. That's some arm intervene. Shortness of breath, chest tightness, and is feeling a little bit feverish. 12 year old and done all of that. You get up to receiving a stud, uh, we're more born now. To be 12, man, and like, do that to yourself. God knows what's going through our head. Yeah. Poor thing. Oh, are we young to be feeling like that? Oh, absolutely. Hello, my name's Ollie. My colleague, uh, James. Hello. Hi. How are you doing today? You don't know? Well, I get to play with the dog. <laughs> James gets to do all the work. What's, what's been happening today? Her anxiety's up and down, and she's obviously struggling with certain things. Yeah. Today she wouldn't go to school, she was crying, I can't do it, I can't do it. OK. Then teacher came out, had a word with her, she went in with teacher. Right. She came home and she's been self-harming. All right. Do you mind if I do a couple of little checks? Is that all right? Pop your finger in there for me. 98 and 88. Perfect. How are you managing everything at the moment in terms of school? Yeah, it's like the teachers all the work. It's just a struggle. What do you enjoy doing? Sleeping. <laughs> That's because you're getting towards that teenager <laughs> stage now, so you're just getting <laughs> practising. And how are you feeling with everything else? Everything else, like living here, is everything OK? Yeah. Awesome. Right. I know you mentioned you've, you've taken some tablets tonight, but have you hurt yourself at all? So if I said, how would you feel we could start to help fixing things. What do you think what do you think would help you? No, I'm not exactly sure. Because while we're here you can talk to us. Yeah? So if me and James got up now and walked out, now do you feel like you've got enough kind of relief that you don't feel you want to do that straight away? So there's a couple of things that I can do tonight. I can get in touch with an organisation that they call CAMS, which is the Children's Mental Health Service. They're giving you a bit of an avenue for someone to talk to. How does that sound to you? Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Ooh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, kiss. Oh, we're gonna kiss. What's she doing? I can take this one with me. James and Ollie will take their patient to the nearest hospital where she'll talk to the mental health crisis team. There you go. You get yourself comfortable. All I want you to do is just relax, all right? Chill out for a little bit. Since I started the ambulance service five years ago, mental health is on the incline, especially with young people. It is quite frightening. It is a challenge, and sometimes it's frustrating, but they deserve the ambulance you know, as much as some of the kind of high-case emergencies. It's 
Is it a cry for help? Is it a last chance means of, please help me? It's probably the worst day of life for them. And that's, you know, where we come in. And say, actually, well, we can help you. That's it, mind your steps there. I'm going to go this way. Tired. <laughs> Hopefully you won't be too alone. So is there anything planned for the near future that you're looking forward to doing? I don't know what I want to be, but I'm like... What do you want to be? Social That's good. You'll make a really good one, honestly, because if you've been through it yourself, you're no better qualified to be able to sit and speak to people your age. You know what they've gone through, what you've been through. Yeah. You know where it comes from. You just keep working at it and do what you need to do, all right? Hopefully tonight it'll be a step in the right direction for you to get some more help, all right? And no matter how many times you call people out, do it, yeah? yeah. Get the help you need if it helps, all right? South 329. I've got you clear at a hospital. It was just to get a bit of an update, please. Yeah, you know, she recognises she's, um, you know, needing help and she's uh, come to hospital with us with a grandma to get it. Um, she's struggling at school and things. Um, she still has that ambition ahead of herself to, you know, to move forward and uh, it makes me good of it. Well done, and um, hopefully it's onwards and upwards for her. So this one is a little bit further afield. We've got a 33-year-old female. She has took an overdose this evening. Yeah, that's our evening understood. Thanks very much. I think mental health affects so many people differently in their own little way, isn't it? It's not a matter of how big your problem is, it's how it affects you. And I mean, in terms of depression, when I lost my job at the steelworks, so it was very redundant, it was massively difficult for me. I was sort of 26-year-old. It hit me really hard kind of getting up that first morning on the Monday and realising that actually, like, crap, I don't have a job this morning. And it took me a long time to sort of sit there and realise that, you know, I'm going to have to go to the job centre and, and sign on. And it was almost uh, an element of, here we go again. But, but it just shows that, you know, it is, you can get through it. I'm here today as a paramedic apprentice doing a job that I couldn't imagine anything else. Ambulance services, the patient breathing. No, 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 but his wife's doing the first aid test. Right, so the patient's not um, breathing and someone's doing CPR on them now? Yes. Yeah, fucking am really sorry. You've just been auto allocated this category one call. Looks like it's coming through as a cardiac arrest. We're just going to set the EC car off with an EC of about 14 minutes, one four. If you could give her an update from team, please. Right, let's go. Stockton 331, Laura and Natalie are one mile from the patient, and solo paramedic Sean is also en route. What relation are you to the patient? Sister. Are you with the patient there now? No, I'm in midst her. How she found out they weren't breathing? I can ask. How, how did you find out that they weren't breathing? His wife told me. Yeah, it's one of these. This one. This one here. It's all in darkness. Do you want to go for the time? Oh, yeah. I'll get the drugs section. It's locked. Gates open. How did his wife tell you? She just stopped breathing. So, so she, I told her to do the. Right. So did she ring you or something, or how how did she how did she tell you this information? She shouted me in the mind. She shouted up to you in your in your mind. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that you've not actually spoken to anybody about this. No. Hello. Hello. There has been an ambulance called. I'm not familiar. No? Oh, this is the address we got. Uh, right, yeah. My sister's got something 
psychological problems. Oh, oh right, right, right. She's going through a stage at the moment that she's getting seen to. But yeah. Have not come up with anything yet. Oh, bless her. She's just going through that stage. Mm. I don't know whether it's dementia or... Ah, yeah. oh, right. Yeah, make sure oh, she's... Oh, thanks right. for your help, yeah. anyway. I'm glad you've Yeah, that's all right. I do yeah. apologise no, again. No so problem. sorry. No problem. All right. See you take care. Cheers, bye -bye. now. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello. 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 Yeah, we're not entirely sure what's going on with this one. Yeah, he said that his sister's suffering with mental health problems at the moment, unfortunately, which has then led to an ambulance being called. Ah, oh, Roger. Right, no bother. Thank you very much for letting me know. That's two crews that we've taken off of their potential jobs. But it's it's just got mental health with problems. good intent. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If, it, if she's got mental health issues. She's probably nearly had a cardiac arrest or scott. No, I just imagine street. everybody <laughs> rocking up. My daughter's um, taken an overdose. How old is the patient? 16. My husband's had a bottle smashed in his face. He's bleeding and his eye is almost hanging out of his face. Oh, he's, he's really hurt. He's very drunk on a doctor. So, so what, what exactly is the reason for the ambulance? I don't know, I just can't believe him. Right, I mean, we, we can't just send an ambulance out to pick up a drunk person. When will it stop queuing? It's just never ending, is it? Control are responding to a new 999 call every minute. Right, now, the ambulance service is under immense pressure at the moment, OK? They've got a lot of life-threatening emergencies at the moment. There are now 45 calls waiting to be answered. The current waiting time for ambulances in your area at the moment can be up to four hours. Is the patient breathing? Yeah, he's profusely. What's happened? He looks like he smashed his head through our windows. What's the first time of the address there? Highfield Hotel. Do you know this gentleman, or is he just kind of... No, no, he's just a punter. Does he appear intoxicated or anything? Um, yes, very intoxicated. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a 31 year old and he's ended up smashing his head through the windows. The police are being contacted and I believe they are on route. It's up to you if you want to um, hang back a little bit. The nearest available crew to the call in progress is red car 332 Christian and Jess. Who would put their own head through a window, though? If it's somebody else putting your head I mean, through to actually go through, that, but... yeah, to actually go through the window, that must hurt. <laughs> you must be in, you know, in quite a mood to be able to do that. Yeah. You always wonder, like, if there's more to it. Yeah. What's happened? Sorry, oh, head through a window. OK. Dan? Yeah? I'm just going to quickly get you onto the floor, OK, for a second. Is that OK? I don't know where the floor is. So... Just stand up. Right, just sit down on the floor stand, for us, Dan. On, sit down. Just lay, lay, lay back for us. No, no, Dan. Come lay back, back to me. Way. Come back to me. Jess is going to have a look at your head. I'm going to quickly do some observations on you, all right? You just stay there for me, OK? Can you tell me what's happened? I've had two years of obviously. What have you had? Can you remember? Mostly your wine. Right. And then what's happened? My ex-partner and, um, I wouldn't say my current partner. Yeah. You know, I, I've been discussing with relationship options and this, that, the other. OK. It's kind of kicked off a little bit. So I've stood in the middle of it again. Okay. 118. So I've never ever wanted this to go to this, but when they yeah. when they kicked off earlier on... Yeah, these what? things happen. Just have you seen? It, it does. Uh... You can see he's got a bit of a swelling here. Yeah. It's from there. Just from right, OK. OK. Yeah, just, just keep... Just put a little bit of pressure on it. Sorry, that's a bit sore, Dan, all right? No, no problem. How are we feeling at the minute? A bit flabbergasted, isn't it? All of the, all of, all, a lot going on for you. I always think to myself, why is it always me? Mm. Just being the peacekeeper. 
you know, it's just got always to, case call. Just got to the point where things have got too much for you, hasn't it? Yeah. Dan, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to pop another dressing on your head now yeah, that we've well, given it a clean, all right? But we are going to have to pop you down to hospital. Yeah, no problem. OK, just to get your head, head looked at. Is that all yeah, right? No yeah, just to keep some pressure on there just while I get a few more bandages out, please. Feeling like everything's sort of going against you at the moment, Dan. At the moment, yeah. Yeah. Well, tonight, obviously, what we need to do is we need to get these injuries looked at first, OK? And then once the drinks sort of come out your system a little bit, obviously, the crisis team can send someone across to have a chat to you. Mm -hmm. I, know, I, know you, I know you feel like feel things might have not worked before with them, OK? But it, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean, you know, the... It doesn't mean it can't work tonight, can it? We can only try, can't we? Right, Christian, I think what we'll do is if we pop that over and then let go of that. Right, Dan, can you lift your head slightly for me? Right. Oh, just keep it... Keep it there. I like it. You all right? <laughs> Oh. Do you want to go and get the stretcher? Yep. <laughs> You're ready, Dan. Can you just roll over for us? I think drink and self-harm can be an easy escape option. People don't always realise that they're in that spiral of going downwards until it's too late. By the time we get to them, they've gone from crying out to being in a full-on crisis. Sometimes just a voice can maybe help to sway someone from going down that path. Daniel will be taken to James Cook Hospital, one mile away. A few bumps as we're doing it. Head injury, wasn't it? I wasn't. I wasn't expecting that. No, neither was I, I mean, to be honest. Three, three, two. Holly pulls three, three, two. Thank you. I've got you clear at hospital on that one. It was just to get an update in relation to it over. So this young gentleman, he's been out tonight with his partner and has had a bit of a uh, personal altercation. But yeah, he was a canyon of lad. He's obviously got quite a quite a bit going on but he just doesn't seem to be getting the help that he feels he, he wants. I can imagine it's probably being quite frustrating uh, for him. Hopefully he can get some help at the hospital. Doesn't matter how much vomit and blood I see, though, I'm still going to have that pork pie. Halfway through the night shift, and the rate of 999 calls has fallen by 50%, but the call handlers are still receiving 38 calls per hour. Hey, Christy, can I flag a call with you, please? Yeah, so if we can't get an ambulance there soon, I am going to go and see this woman because she's breaking my heart. This is the patient breathing. No, he's not. I'm going to give you advice on how to do basic life support, OK? Put one hand flat in the centre of his chest, so you need to be at a rate of push, 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 push. Push, 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 push. That's great. Keep on going. You're doing a great job. The ambulances are travelling as quickly as they can on lights and sirens, OK? Adam, can you try and contact fire, see if they've got anything closer? I've got ETAs of 40 minutes. Keep on pushing hard and fast for me. One, two, three, one, two. With the patient living in a remote village and the nearest resource currently making the 15-minute journey towards them, Call handler Chris must stay on the line to guide the family through CPR. One, two, three, one, two. They, they're travelling as quickly as I can. I can't give, I can't you give can't them any idea. That, that. That's, that's Keep on going for me until somebody else takes over. Is there someone there with you? There's the ambulance people on There's an ambulance person with you. 
Okay, I'm gonna leave you with them. You're doing a really good job, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Crew still aren't there. Fire got there. Yeah. Fantastic work, what you've done there, Mayan. I'm hungry. Let me have one now. Oh, go on, then. You've been a good boy. You have been a good boy. Mmm. They are better warmed up, though. We can't put that on. Come on. What are you doing? What? That was an instructional song for you. When I'm tired, you need to rub my shoulders. Oh! And tell me what I can do for you. Come on, you're supposed to be this. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't get paid enough for any of that, like. Hartlepool 329, Ollie and James have just cleared from their third job of the night. Hartlepool 329. Hi, Paul 329. Roger, thank you. We've got an 89-year-old male. Uh, he's made the call himself. He is having some black vomit. Um, he's feeling quite weak. This has happened to him in the past, and he ended up in hospital through it. And that's everything, over. We're uh, mobile now. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you. Hi there. Ambulance service. What's happening this morning, then? Well, when you throw up, Tom, what does your vomit look like? I know it's oh, not a very nice question to ask. Black. It's black. Yeah. Just really How many times have you, have you brought this black vomit up? Oh, just twice tonight. Twice tonight. Can I just have a little feel of your stomach? Is that all right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go really lightly, right, at first. I want you to tell me where the pain is, and the second time I'll go a little bit heavier, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press nice and gently. You tell me when it is. That was tender there, but not so the hey, pain as such. So it's just, just tender. tender. All right. Are we eating less and less nowadays? E yes, but that's not intentional. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'm not slimming. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so what, what do you feel is the reason that you're eating a bit less then? Oh, convenience. As, as much as anything, um, got my mouth very dry. Do you want me to go and make you a cup of tea? Yeah, drink of water. Would like a drink of water? Yeah. Should we go? Can I go out and have a look in the yeah, kitchen? I'll, I'll go you drink of water. You should. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. sit. You just relax. All I want you to do, Tom, is just try, try not to feel nervous. All right. We'll go through everything together. I know <laughs> it's nervous, easy. Have you? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> You can see it, all of your numbers, observations are looking fine. I'm going to check your temperature, Tom, or is that all right? There we go, 36.0. Oh, I couldn't find your glasses, Tom, so... Let me take this off your fingers. I feel a little bit nervy. Nervy. And I feel okay. a little bit shaky. Yeah. But that might be with these people. Being there. Yeah. You're only human, Tom, and we're two very good-looking blokes. <laughs> so. Found your gun. Ah, what, what have you got going? a gun for? Uh, keep people out. All <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Is it an air gun? Is it an air pellet thing? Yeah. Call it a Tommy gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, many, many, many years ago, I was in the Royal Marine Commandos. Oh, wow. I was in the shooting squad. And there was half a dozen of us that were regarded as crack shots. Were you ever posted anywhere? I was on board the HMS uh, Zodiac for about six months. What's your best memory, then, of being in the Marines? What, what was it you enjoyed the most? It was the comradeship of the other guys. Mm -hmm. Pull each other through. Oh, yeah. Does anyone else come to see you, Tom? No, not really. Uh, no. 
We're always at the end of the phone if you have any problems. When do you say at the end of the phone? Yes. Do I have your phone number? 999. <laughs> Everyone's got my number. How do you feel now, Tom? I feel like standing up and going to bed. <laughs> do you? <laughs> Shall we clear off? If you have any episodes of any sort of abdominal pain, or you start vomiting anything up, or you otherwise feel unwell, then give us a call back, yeah. and then we can pick it up and go from there. Right, Tom, we'll love you and leave you then, OK? It's lovely to hear you and your stories. Yeah. Oh, right. Absolute pleasure. So, good man. All right, Tom. Right. You take care now, all right? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll Absolute you lovely to meet you. You're OK. You're all right. We'll sort it out, yeah? See you, oh, well, that's very... Very kindly, sir. It's an old-fashioned thing. It is. <laughs> oh. Do you know what they say about saving the best till last? Yeah. Well, you're the last <laughs> patient for us tonight. That's us done now. Oh, so, it. and we've definitely had the last, the best patient last. <laughs> Absolutely. So. You take care, Tom. All right. Bye bye. That's the first time I've ever had that. Way he says, "What's your number?" I thought I'd give you a ring. Well. Oh. I could, I would, I'd give him my own personal number and be getting tight if I could. If you, if you could, I'd come round here and meet this guy every day of the week. What a lovely guy he was. I love it when you finish the shift with a really nice patient. Yeah. That's, that's why happy, you do the job. Happy job, happy story. Absolutely. That is why we do it. Holly Pulsar 329, thank you. I think that's probably it for us tonight as well. Um, so I just want to say thanks for everything. You've been a pleasure. To me, the role of paramedic isn't always about the, the big jobs like you see on the news, the CPR, the traumas, the car crashes. You become a support network to somebody. You know, you do walk down the path and you do think, could I do any more for them? Could I help them? Hello, darling. Hi, Holly. You're on a better mood today. <laughs> Probably not for very long. Oh, great. Love that. It's the start of the Thursday night shift, and dispatchers Holly and Sam are back on duty. What do you think tonight's going to be like? Um, what we're thinking. Because I wasn't expecting yesterday to be the way it was, yeah. like, coming in at that many jobs. Hartlepool 329, good evening. 329, good evening. Happy Women's Day. Oh, yes, I forgot about that. Um, happy Women's Day to you as well. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise you could see how big the moves were from all the way up there. <laughs> I didn't realise what I said till after. <laughs> I am blonde, you know. <laughs> We're just going to complete our final checks, but if you've got anything outstanding, you can send it through for us. I have. It's quite busy at the minute, so I'll pop something through, and if you just complete your checks, I'll, uh, I'll speak to you soon. Have a good night. What was he hanging from? Like... From, like, the, like, light thing. Ridiculous. Has he got, like, marks around his neck and stuff, has he? So I'll go to... Just cos I've left me shopping right outside flat door, but live yeah. in a rough area, I'll get a pinch. <laughs> See if that ends. And how old is he? He's 75. And you said you think he's having another heart attack? He's had two before. And these symptoms that he's got now, are they similar to his previous heart attacks? It is, yes, yeah. Yeah, right. He's got the emergency ambulance arranged. It is one of our highest priority ambulances. We will be with you as soon as we possibly can. Right, just keep an eye out for the ambulance coming, OK? He needs help. I think you should be crying out for help, but I would rather someone help him now before it's too weird. Is he so breathless that speaking more than a few words is impossible? He can speak, but he's just not making sense. Just not making sense, right, over. Yeah. Ambulance service, hello, please. Um, have you had any calls for someone stuck in a manhole? For someone stuck in a manhole, did you say? Yeah, we're stopping for the entire period of the minute. Let's have a look. Yeah, we're attending as a Category 3. 
The patient was trying to get out of the hole, they were conscious intoxicated of a female in her 50s. Ambulance services, patient breathing. If you want me to stay on the line, that's absolutely fine. I can do that, and then at least you're not on your own, all right? Just one hour into the shift, and there are already 22 patients waiting for an ambulance, and a new call is coming in every 50 seconds. The ambulance has been categorised as a high priority, but we are busy across the ambulance service. Current average waiting time across the area is up to two hours, but we'll come in as quickly as we can on lights and sirens, OK? What sort of time period are we looking at for these seven energy drinks? It was basically spread out from 11 o'clock all the way through to 4 o'clock when the episode happened. So just try and keep your breathing as regular as possible and that will help, OK? Yeah. With all due respect, the amount of caffeine that you've put into your system, it is no the wonder that you're shaking. So try not to be too alarmed. It's not like a life-threatening state. Yeah, as I say, we've, like we've ruled... Yes, of course, definitely. So we have ruled out the need for a life-threatening emergency ambulance. So, you know, I appreciate it will be scary at the moment, but try not to worry too much. Well, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye. If I don't win a Pride of Britain award for how I handled that call, I swear to God. You want to just go, you're wasting me time. But we can't do that because they have run for help. They're asking for help. People are anxious and don't know where to turn. I understand that now. We are a faceless voice, but while I'm on that phone, I am a voice, I am there, and I am present. I'm listening. NHS 111, what's the reason for your call this evening? My leg's just gone dead, my foot and everything. I can't stand on it. 332. Three. Three, two. Three, two. Three, two. Respond. Female, 77 year old, she's unable to stand up, and she's got leg pain over. Una, leg pain, cannot stand. That's all it says, there isn't much detail on this one. The nearest crew to the Category 2 patient with unexplained leg pains is Red Car 332, Christian and Jess. I reckon this will be an infection-based reason as to why she's not able to stand at the moment. Are we here for Una? Right, Una, how can we help you today? I don't know what happened, right, okay. but I was just sat on the seat tonight and when I went to get up again, my knee just went. Oh, yeah, you can even... see it's quite swollen, isn't it? Let's have a look on the inside I just can't to compare even, it. I can't even put it to okay. the ground. OK. You know, while you're talking to Jess, I'm just going to do a few little checks on you, OK? Yes, that's OK. All right. And so you were just sat today... I was just sat on the seat, wasn't I, tonight? On the seat. And, and did you go to stand up? And did you feel pain no, in your knee, or what said, happened? Oh, my knee seems to have gone again. When I tried to stand up, I couldn't. You just couldn't stand and up. I can't even get to go on. Right. Am I all right just to have a feel? Yeah. Is that all right? Well, yeah, I might shout. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> can you straighten your leg as much as you can for me? That's, That's as far yeah. as you can go. Right, yeah. I'm just going to have a feel up here first. Yeah. All right, so you've got no pain. Yeah. Have you got, yeah. You've got pain there? Yeah. I've got pain down, like, all down here. And is this new this evening when this pain yes, came on yes. as well? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, just there. Uh, oh. Sorry. Okay. Do, do you have any past medical history? Do you take any regular medications yeah, for anything? I have blood cancer. And I have, um, Are you having any treatment for that at the yeah, moment? Yeah, I have chemo, put in tablet bomb every day. Right, okay. Twice a day. Twice a day. Okay. I'm going to do your ear yeah. when I can find it amongst your hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything that we've checked is fine, oh, okay? Yeah, yeah. But I think because you're struggling to mobilise and walk, on that leg, I think we're going to probably have to pop you up to hospital to get an X-ray on your knee. Yeah. Just to make sure that there's nothing too serious going on. Is that all right with you? Yeah. That's yeah? Right. Okay. Right. Right. Just take your time. 
your time. There's no rush. Right, I'll tell you what we'll do. If you can shuffle to the end of the bed, what we'll do is we'll stand you up on your good leg and then we'll get the chair in behind you this side. Okay. I've got the chair, so you don't have to worry about that. Right, let's get your feet on here. Can you lift this leg up for me? It's going to be the not so fun bit, isn't it? There we go. Getting squeeze in. Come in, come in the left with us. Oh. oh. You put yourself in here in that gap there. All right. So once we're in the back, we'll pop you on top of a stretcher, all right? Right. I'll pass you that one there. You OK? You manage this, oh, or, yeah. or do you need a hand? You're OK, yeah? OK, right, there you go. We'll look after her, OK? Bye. Right, you take care, OK? Una will be taken to North Tees Hospital, eight miles away. So how did you and Trevor get to meet, then? Oh, at the dance. Oh, so did you? Uh, and how, how long have you been married? Uh, 57 years, last Tuesday. Wow. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. Was he a good man? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and what did you and Trevor both do? I, a trip was a bricklayer and I had a bakery. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, you could have had the cakes ready for us coming. I'm not sure this is a patient breathing. I'm not with the patient at the moment. I'm ringing from the crisis team. She's reported that she's taken an overdose. She's decided really quite hopeless about the future. She said she wants to end her life. Hello, Pool 329. I've got a Category 2 call on you ready, please. She has taken an overdose. Uh, she's had a litre of vodka and some whiskey. Paracetamol, and she's advised the crisis team that she was planning on leaving the address. Uh, no, it can't steal the razor blade. No threat to others. Ah, thanks, Holly. That's no problem. Thank you very much. We'll uh, tend to the mobile now, but... Hi, Bill. South 329. Yeah, 329. Thank you. Holly, just on the phone for a minute. Um, she says she's on the run, seven of the railings on the promenade. Why are you feeling like that? What's happened? Do you think that you could climb back over onto the right side of the railings? Let me jump out and see if I can see it from here. Well, you cannot leave everybody behind and you'll have people that care about you. What about your little cat? You can't leave him behind. We think she's like on the other side of here. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. but if she's in the water. Are you still on the wrong side of the railing? Yeah, we can't deal with it anymore. She's just hung up because I asked her where about she was. She just doesn't want any help. The stuff, Ollie. Ollie and James have tracked down the suicidal patient to a section of railings on the seafront. Hey, you're all right. How's it going? Now, if you're this side, I'm this side. Why is it work? It's not safe this side. Then why are you here? But what have I always said to you? Your illness, your mental health is just the same as if somebody breaks the leg or any any other reason. Three, two, nine. Have we had any progress over? Yeah, sorry, Holly. Apologies for the delay in the uh, update there. Um, just to confirm, we have made contact with the patient. My uh, colleague's talking to her now. Um, we do also have uh, police and coast guard present on scene as well. Uh, at the moment, we are having a few difficulties getting uh, uh, the patient over the other side of the barrier. Um, so my colleague's just trying to uh, coach you with that. Um, but I'll give you another update uh, shortly as follows over. 
Oh, no problem, ma'am. That's great news. I know. So, let's see if tonight we can't do something to change that. Right? Let's go, just let's go and have a chat in the ambulance first. <laughs> Can you not? Right. How long have you been sat here? I don't know. Then I've got a question for you. Why the hell are we sat in the dark, high up? If neither of us like the dark and neither of us like the heights. Right. Good kill. Well done. Excellent. Right. That's it. Hey, I've gone dizzy as well. Stood up. Must be the headland there. Just keep hold of that barrier with you. Your left arm, if you want. That's it. All done. Hey, done. Nice one. Well done. Uh, Hartley Pool 329. Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you. We've uh, had a sec successful recovery from the uh, other side of the barriers. Hey, bad girl. I want to just go and give her a cuddle. I will always try and build a relationship with that person on the phone and try and take the mind off what they're thinking about doing. I mean, two of me close friends have hung themselves. The shock of that that felt that way that they had to do that really upset us. I would look back through my messages and think, have I missed something? I wish I'd engaged with mental health services if they'd spoke to the GP, if they'd talk to their friends and family about it. They might have still be here. Have you had anything to eat and drink today? No. I'll get you something to eat if you want something to eat. No, I'm all right, I'm sure. You sure? I don't even want a Mackey's. So I'm getting hot chocolate. You want a hot chocolate? Yes, I like Mackey's or chocolate. Fair enough, then. I'll go for my own, my job. Well, get your hot chocolate for Mackey's. You keep your money so you make sure you get home. There's no one-size-fits-all depression, I think. There's no quick fix to it. It's going to be a challenge and a journey for them. They have to want to do it. You have to kind of learn to find a way to kind of break through to them. That's hopefully going to be a turning point for them where they're going to be able to get the help and support and not be in that situation again. There you go. Cheers, dude. Molly and James will take their patient to North Teesside Hospital, where she'll be assessed by the crisis team. Just watch these steps when you get out, all right? That's it. Hartlepool South, 329. Hartlepool South, 329. Um, I think you have got your clear. How was that over? Obviously, as you're aware, we had to try and find the patient. And then uh, once we worked, we did find her. She was the other side of the railings um, in quite a precarious position. And eventually, we managed to get her to the right side of the railings and uh, into the ambulance. So we treated her to a hot chocolate on the way to hospital. Oh, Roger, um, that's great. Uh, I thought you must have must have stopped on the way down. I, I noticed you were mapping. I thought you might have been getting her a little treat. We get her on the phone in here quite a lot, and I think sometimes people are quick to judge. But tonight, obviously, I spoke to her for quite a while on the phone, and she was like really genuine, and I did feel really sorry for her. So I'm glad the outcome was what it was, and you've managed to get her down. Thank you very much for that one. Do you just want to head back? Thank you very much. Teach me how to swim. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, James. Yes, I'll see you soon. Thank you, Sam. People are crying out for help. It is heartbreaking. We can go there and sit and listen. We can offer our support. Saving a life doesn't necessarily mean bringing someone back from cardiac arrest. It can be just a few supporting words. I'm tired. I want to go home. Me too. You're all right. You only need 20 minutes of beauty sleep to kick top up. I need four hours. Can't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> I've kind of seen a lot of people struggling, and there is definitely people who give up. It's about making them be in a place of safety, not just physically, but mentally. In their minds, I think, actually, these people care about me and they want the best for me. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It might take us three hours over our finish time, but we're there to do it and we help them. Details of organisations offering information and support you can find on the Action Line pages of the BBC website.